A young genius sent him a breakthrough and never heard back. Another begged to be heard, days before a duel. He was brilliant, obsessive, unforgiving. He wrote more mathematics than anyone in history. Augustin Louis Cauchy changed mathematics forever. But at what cost? This is the story of the man who shaped the future by shutting the door on his own time. Augustin Louis Cauchy was born into chaos. While France tore itself apart, his family hid, loyal to the king. His father whispered, we will survive this, and you will rise. The revolution raged outside. Inside, a genius had just entered the world. By seven, he read Latin like a priest. By eleven, he solved math that stunned adult. He didn't chase fun, he chased truth in numbers. People called him a child of destiny. The Cauchy were royalists, loyal to the old world. Augustine grew up fearing revolution and worshipping God. His beliefs became armour, and one day, a weapon. He met the giants of math and left them speechless. Laplace told his father he must study math, nothing else. Just like that, Augustine's path was drawn. He would follow the stars and outshine them. At just 16, he entered the top school in France. By 19, he was working with the best minds in Europe. Everything came easy to him, until it didn't. Cauchy believed God gave him his gift, and he owed everything to him. He fasted, prayed, judged. Others were lazy, he thought, undisciplined. His faith made him strong, but made friendship difficult. He proved theorems no one else dared attempt. But he didn't just want to solve math. He wanted to control it. At 27, he joined the French Academy, beating a respected rival. That's when the whispers began. He was the golden boy of France, brilliant, untouchable. But behind every genius, is the first mistake. By 30, Cauchy ruled the French Academy like a fortress. He was the youngest, but his words weighed the most. No paper got published without passing his desk. He wasn't just solving math, he was deciding who got to matter. In 1826, a young Norwegian named Abel sent Cauchy a masterpiece. It solved a 300-year-old problem in algebra. He mailed it to the Academy with only one hope, that Augustin Louis Cauchy would recognise its worth. Cauchy read it, maybe. He promised to submit it for review. He didn't. The paper vanished in the clutter. Abel waited, starved, coughed, then died. Another genius, younger, wilder. Galois didn't beg for approval, he demanded it. He sent his life's work to the Academy, to Cauchy, his theory of groups decades ahead of its time. Cauchy never responded. Some say he lost the paper. Others say he disliked Galois' politics or his rage. Either way, the door stayed shut. 
and the silence grew louder. Cauchy's pride made him feared and resented. He dismissed those who disagreed, corrected everyone. Even friends turned distant. He didn't care. He was sure he was right. Galois died in a duel at 20. The night before, he begged someone to read his work. It took years before anyone realized what he'd done. Cauchy never mentioned his name again. While two geniuses were buried, Cauchy kept publishing, kept rising. To him, the world was a proof to be corrected, not questioned. And the gate still closed. Eighteen thirty, France changed again, a new king, a new order. Every academic was told to swear loyalty. Cauchy refused. He stood for God and monarchy, not man. And with that stroke, he lost everything. They asked him to bend. He chose exile instead. His desk went cold, his lectures vanished. For the first time in decades, Cauchy was alone. He didn't flinch. Turin, Rome, Prague. He traveled like a ghost, chasing clarity. Every city gave him a desk, but not a home. His mind kept working, his heart closed further. He didn't just believe in God, he lived for him. His math became a mission, his logic sacred. He even refused jobs unless his religion was protected. Science was precision, faith absolute. Years later, Cauchy saw what Galois had tried to show. A genius cut down before the world could listen. Cauchy offered to publish it, but Galois was already buried. He came back, but the world had moved on. New minds stood where he once ruled. They respected his work, not his ways. Cauchy didn't belong anymore. Even in exile, he wrote, hundreds of papers, thousands of pages. He couldn't stop, didn't know how. It wasn't for glory now. It was all he had left. He outlived them all, genius unmatched, faith unshaken. But behind the theorems sat a man, brilliant, bitter, and completely alone. August 23, 1857. After 68 years of brilliance and stubbornness, Augustine Louis Cauchy breathed his last, alone, respected, but not without ghosts. Over 800 papers. He gave the world more mathematics than some universities hold. He didn't just contribute to fields, he built them. His work lives on, quietly, invisibly. From the Cauchy stress tensor holding up skyscrapers, to the Cauchy Riemann equations mapping fluid flow and electric fields, even the smooth curve in your phone's facial recognition, that's a Cauchy distribution at work. But history isn't written in theorems alone. For every formula Cauchy preserved, there were minds he left behind. Legacy, like mathematics, is never one-sided. His name survived revolutions, rivalries, and time. No matter where math lives, Cauchy is there, speaking the language he helped define. The foundations he drew still hold, but so do the cracks. Because even the brightest minds leave shadows, especially when they stand in the light alone. Augustin Louis Cauchy, genius, architect, gatekeeper. 
In life, he defined rigor. In death, he left a question only time could solve. If this story moved you even a little, please consider liking the video, especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, we'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful. Stay curious.